Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. I've literally just finished the outro to my last one, so there's very little to, new to, to mention, other than, than that I'm currently reading Down Under by Bill Bryson. It is very good. Oh, I might finish my bedtime book tonight as well, but um, I might as well wait until I have finished it to update you guys on that one. Alright. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention, I had my anxiety meeting today, so that was quite good, just learning like new coping strategies and stuff. It's actually mostly based on um, like worries and negative thoughts today, so that was cool. So we got some new ways to kind of identify them, different like negative speech patterns and thought patterns we fall into and stuff. So yeah, it's all about trying to improve slowly but surely, and that's what I'm working on. I'm working on it. Okay, I'm working on it. <laughs> Chinese style pancakes and death in paradise. Yeah, so like mushrooms, the hoisin. Got some cucumber and some spring onions. Some more hoisin. Osakor Obi Wan Kenobi, vous êtes mon seul espoir. Oh, there's somebody doing their garden. I think I'm weird. Ma bouche, mes dents. Uh, oh yeah, I was gonna go, I was gonna go put on mad shit motherfucker twat No, it doesn't really it, they just had a look today, but I have to go back next week on Wednesday for them to actually you know poke at my face with things But it'll be okay now to the doctors Extra large XL Ants can lift 10 to 50 times their body weight <laughs> Farah Paupière Yes, now we just need to wrap it up. Little mini pancakes too. I'm watching French Star Wars, as you do. No. Je suis ton père. Je suis ton père. No. C'est pas vrai. C'est impossible. Oh, hello. Okay, high definition, Dane, coming at you. Uh, my camera turned up. It was at the anchor. It was behind a coffee machine. So they only found it because they got rid of the coffee machine. So that's kind of lucky. Although they would have found it eventually because the, the pub is basically being torn down in like three or four months. So yeah, me and Dave went to play there last night. It was a bit weird. Basically the only person there was the landlord. We had like two other people pop in for like half an hour each. Like me and Dave were the only ones playing. So yeah, that was strange. Uh, it's now Saturday though. I have just finished watching The Empire Strikes Back. I can't remember what it's called actually in French. Le Empire Contre Attack, I think, or something like that. Um, yeah, just because I've got it on in French with French subtitles on and then trying to kind of follow the dialogue and stuff. But because I've seen Star Wars, especially the original trilogy, so many times, it's pretty easy to do. So um, it seems like a pretty effective way of learning some more French, I guess. I should update you on books and stuff too. Uh, well, I finished reading Down Under by Bill Bryson. My actual copy of it is over there, but I'm gonna keep this as my main copy because basically I lost it and for about like two weeks, I was looking for it and couldn't find it. And then so I bought a new copy of it, which is this one. And then I found my copy of it later that day. It was inside my sofa for some reason. So yeah, this is my other copy, which I'll probably either sell or pass on to somebody. I don't know. But uh, yeah, going to do a review of that. It was quite good. A return back to form, really, because in the one he wrote about traveling around Europe, the title of which I can't even remember, maybe neither here nor there, actually, um, it was really like off-putting it didn't make me want to travel at all it he just sort of complained about everything and i was like oh okay so um yeah he was back on form with this one writing about australia and traveling around he's done a lot of research as well so that was all very cool i also finished ishmael and his sisters by louise stern this was a bedtime book uh, this was one that was sent to me for free as part of like a book subscription service it basically focuses on the deaf community so let me read you the blurb Siblings Ishmael, Rosie and Christine are deaf, as are many in their Maya village. The deaf and hearing alike communicate in sign language, forming a tightly knit community with a simple lifestyle. But when Ishmael gets into a fight at the local fiesta and flees the village, leaving Rosie and Christina to fend for themselves, the daily rhythms of village life are disrupted and all that they trust in comes under threat. And um, 
it's written in quite an unusual way because these like main characters are all deaf and so the way they communicate is very different this has actually got pretty harsh reviews i would say on goodreads i gave it like a 3.25 maybe 3.5 out of 5 uh, but it's got a lot of twos and a lot of ones but it was it was all right um yeah, I mean, actually, the other book that was sent to me with, with that box, um, I haven't read that one because that one's like a romancy one and I'm just not interested. But this one, because the subject matter was kind of cool, um, yeah, it was all right. And then I read Terry Pratchett, The Complete Discworld Atlas. So this is literally in the back here. It's got this, I'm not going to actually fold it out because I'll never get it away again. But it's got a fold out map here, look, that you can, you know, open up and put on your wall or whatever. Uh, and then also it's like then like a reference book so for example here we have uh, the counterweight continent and surrounding islands so we've got this like little map like chief exports the governance and it just talks about all the different like locations of the disc world so I'm a completionist which is why I read this because it's kind of on my radar I want to read every Terry Pratchett book and this is one of them but yeah it was pretty good it was like 3.75 out of 5 it was kind of enjoyable and then I picked up Thrilling Cities by Ian Fleming. So this is like his non-fiction travel writing, basically. He was commissioned by, I want to say, yeah, it was the Sunday Times to go around some of the world's, like, exotic cities. So, for example, where's the contents? He went to Hong Kong, Macau, Tokyo, Honolulu, LA and Las Vegas, Chicago, New York, Hamburg, Berlin, Vienna, Geneva, Naples and Monte Carlo. And I'm currently in Hamburg. So... Yeah, that'll give you an, an idea of how I'm doing with it. It's alright so far, it's probably like a 3.5 out of 5 again. It's kind of dated a little bit. Um, but again, this is the only Fleming book I haven't read. I've read all of his James Bond books. And I've read Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, which not many people realise he also wrote that as well. <laughs> so this is the last one for me to finish off. So that's where I'm at with my reading. Later this evening, I'm going to meet Noemi. We're going to go for some food, some vegan pizza at the Chilton Taps. I'm currently making sun-dried tomatoes, well, oven-dried tomatoes. Um, so I'm going to give some to her because she can have those with her, like her salads for work. And also I wanted some. So yes. And then I think we're going to go and check out some music later at the Bellevue. There is a band called... The Sobernauts. I think we're going to see the Sobernauts. Hello, um, it is Sunday. Um, kind of tired, not particularly hungover though. Oh God, I look tired. That's awful. Why do I look so tired? Yeah, so little vlog update. So uh, went out for dinner last night, which was lovely. And I made my son try tomatoes. They, they went down very well. <laughs> um, yeah, we were going to go and check out some music, but we didn't in the end. Uh, so we just sort of, yeah, just stayed at the Chilton Taps and had a few drinks. So that was nice. Um, back home today, just cracking on with being productive and stuff. I'm currently in kind of a bad mood because just basically, I don't know, I'm not really enjoying music-y stuff at the moment. And, like, I have commitments, if that makes sense. So I've got a gig I've got to play on Thursday, which I, I just don't want to play, but I have to. And then on Friday, I was supposed to be hosting the open mic night, but I don't really want to do that either. And that's kind of made, that's come out, uh, that's made me like more determined not to do it. Because somebody got sent me a message out of the, like at, totally at random. Um, just saying, I'd be more likely to come if you did actually host the event, introducing acts, addressing the audience, and not walking about in front of the stage whilst others are performing. It needs to be loud when other acts are on and not just yours. I hope you accept this constructive criticism at face value. I hope to join you soon. So yeah, it is kind of constructive criticism. It's just that like, so I, I have nothing to do with the sound. I don't do sound. Uh, I can pass that on to someone else. Uh, and I sort of do my best to host the event. So it's it, this makes me think, oh, I, I'm not doing good enough, I guess. Like I always introduce each act by name and then at the end say like, big round of applause for so-and-so. And next up we have blah, 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 you know? Um, so maybe, I don't know, maybe I should be telling jokes in between stuff. But this is the thing, is the only reason I host it is because no one else wants to host it. So now I'm, I'm, I've just said I don't want to do it this Friday, so Dave will do it because, the, because there is nobody else to do it, you know? Um, but like, as well, like, walking about in front of stage or whatever, I mean, I suppose I do. I take photos and stuff to help promote it. And then, like, I'll go to each act before they go up being like, okay, you're on next if you need to tune in, etc. And, like, people will beckon me over, so I'll go over and they'll be like, what time am I on? And, like, all this shit, like, 
I don't want to have to do that. I don't, I, another thing I hate, I hate having to tell people, like, sorry, we, we just literally, we don't have enough time for everyone to go on. Or sometimes people have to go down to two songs. Um, and so, like, you know, and I hate having to do that. Or like, yeah, if people don't get a chance to perform, like, I know at least a couple of people, or like friendships, where I'm like a bit iffy about that friendship now, because I know that person was mad at me because there wasn't time for them to go on or because I had to leave early and we didn't squeeze them on because there were 25 performers or whatever. So it's just this extra stress I don't need in my life. And uh, plus like Noemi's going on Friday, so like I kind of want to spend the evening with her. And like I want to play I want to play my three songs, you know, but that's about it. So that's what I think I'm going to do. So yeah, that's where we're at. I'm probably going to do a little update later on maybe because I've almost finished Thrilling Cities by Ian Fleming. So um yeah, I've got like 40, 50 pages to go, so I'll probably finish that today. And then I don't know what I'm going to read next, but it might be uh, Happy Slapped by a Jellyfish by Carl Pilkington. Also, Biggie is over here. Hey, cat. And it's really cold in my flat, because I, I, I wasn't here last night, and so I've only just put the heating back on. Well, the heating, the heaters. I have two heaters. Just watching me a bit of... Uh... Death in Paradise. Okay, so it is now Sunday evening. I finished reading Thrilling Cities. I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. It wasn't thrilling all the way through. In fact, there were points at which it was very unthrilling. Like, what was that bit in it? Um, yeah, he was in like Monte Carlo and he spent like four pages talking about his method for winning at blackjack and it's just like, oh. But yeah, overall it was pretty interesting. Kind of fairly early kind of example of travel writing I guess um, yeah he was sent to these cities by the Sunday Times and it was just interesting to read I mean in the Bill Bryson book that I read earlier this week Bryson said that modern travel uh, basically it's the whole point of it is to see things before they're gone and that kind of came across in this in that a lot of the stuff that he wrote about in this is now gone whether we've moved on as a society or you know what have you and uh, it was only like 60 years old or so so pretty interesting and now i've just picked up happy slapped by a jellyfish by carl pilkington so that's what i'm going to end this reading vlog on because as it's now sunday evening i'm going to love you and leave you i've been very successful at doing some editing and stuff as well you'd be proud of me new videos and stuff coming soon and all in all, yeah, a good time is had by all. So on that note, thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.